4 p.m. right here at KZSU Stanford 90.1 FM. It is time for Arabology. I am your DJ Ramsey, and I'll be with you today and every Thursday from 4 p.m. till 6 p.m. I'm glad you were able to join me on this, well, extra-packed edition of Arabology. Uh, this week, I'm going to be uh, featuring an amazing interview with a uh, Moroccan internationally acclaimed director whose name is Mu'min Smihi and who uh, was kind enough to uh, give me an interview along with another amazing scholar and that is Peter Limbrick from uh, UCSC uh, professor over there, assistant professor who also sat down with me for that interview. We're going to have some nice music. We're going to uh, feature the interview in two parts and uh, sometimes during the show we'll also be giving away two tickets to the Aswat contest uh, well Aswat concert and uh, hopefully uh, you'll be the lucky winner so all of that and plenty more coming up on uh, this week's edition of Arabology the show that attempts to take you on a virtual carpet ride through the Arabic speaking world my very special thanks to Julia whose show uh, that you just heard before mine always always manages to put a smile on my face and thank you for that nostalgic trip uh, Julia Uh, in the meantime let's begin our own trip here with uh, none other than uh, the Lebanese group Mashru'a Layla from their uh, new album uh, called Ra'asuk I'm going to feature a song called Abdo now Abdo is the name of a fictional guy and if you want to know who Abdo is well let me tell you in Arabic and then I'll tell you in English. بين الشوارع صوت بحوم لأبو عبد المظلوم قالوا مرة كان مغروم بأرملة من بيت سلوم أبرت قلبة والمرحوم ونكرت صوته للمظلوم عبدو يلي كان مغروم قرر عن الحب يصوم And uh, the translation is Among the streets uh, you hear a sound lurking around They called him Poor Poor Abdo. They say that once upon a time he was in love with a widow from the Saloum family, but she buried her heart along with her dead husband and she denied the poor voice of Abdo. So Abdo, who was so in love, decided to fast from love. There you go. That song is called uh, Abdo. It is from Masru'a Layla's new CD and uh, it will be, begin today's set right here on the Arabology Show coming to you from KZSU Stanford 90.1 FM. <laughs> أرملي من بيت سلوم أبرت قلبه والمرحوم ونكرت صوته للمظلوم عبده يلي كان مغروم مرر عن الحب يصوم
غالي الجرايد إعلانات للخريجين والخريجات أشغال كتير راتب كبير حاسب لا يوم عقلك يطير مطلوب خبير يحكي حكايات أو سمكاري يعرف لغات يعزف كمان وكورديون يكسب عشان يفتح صالون عصر وفاهم في الحلاق والحدق والسواق عشان كده بيعرف يسوق أصله كان خرج حقوق خرج جديد فرحان سعيد والليلة حلوة الليلة عيد ولقيت أكيد محتاج فانوس ويجيب منن معوش فلوس لكن في إيده وجوا السفر والحل ده كان معتبر سافر عشان عايز يكون الدكتوراه رسم الصحون Amazing songs to start this edition of Arabology. You heard, uh, well, we start with an Egyptian band. Uh, it was called, uh, uh, let's see, uh, Masad Igbari. The song is called Ikra al Khabar, which means uh, read the news. And the uh, second song you heard, of course, was uh, Abdo, and that was uh, Mashru Alayla from their brand new album, uh, Ra'asuk. Uh, great way to start an extra special, extra fun packed show. Uh, today, uh, Thursday, October 17th. Uh, plenty of things going on. Uh, in terms of Arabic culture productions and film, not only at uh, Stanford and in the Bay Area, but also at UC Santa Cruz. And I'm delighted uh, to feature in uh, today's show a two-part interview with uh, Professor Peter Limbrick, who is Associate Professor in the Film and Media and Digital Media Department that's over there at UC Santa Cruz. And and uh, Mu'min Smihi, who is a filmmaker born uh, in Tangier, Morocco, and whose career spans more than four decades, during which he has written, produced, and directed award-winning and influential feature films, short films, and documentaries. Mu'min Smihi is considered to be a seminal member of the new 
Arab cinema, which began to flourish in the 1970s. Its proponents, inspired by political and artistic concerns, and very similar to Italy's New Realism or France's Nouvelle Vague, uh, worked outside of the studio systems of Hollywood and of Egypt, where business incentives dictated form and content. Hey, man, are you digging those smooth and creamy sounds that you're hearing on KZSU Stanford? Well, if you are, here's a thought. You could put your money where your ears is. That's right, man. Donate to KZSU. Or underwrite. If you're a business, you could put your business's name in front of the public. Just like on those TV shows where they say, The following program was partially paid for by a generous donation from the Hubert and Wilma Helminth Foundation. And you could be Mrs. Wilma Helminth. Cool. For more information about how to donate or underwrite for KZSU, contact our underwriting department at underwriting at kzsu.stanford.edu or give us a call at 650-723-9010. And one of our happy DJs will be so pleased to hear from you. Thanks, and don't forget to keep on listening. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the first part of my interview with uh, Mu'min Smihi and uh, Peter Limbrick. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Thursday, October 17th. Welcome to KZSU 90.1 FM. This is the Arabology Show, and today I am delighted and honored to welcome two special guests, guests who have much to contribute and speak about in terms of Arabic cultural production, specifically in terms of film and poetry. Poetry. My two guests are uh, Peter Limbrick and Mu'min As-Samihi, also known as Mu'min Smihi. <laughs> so, Peter, welcome. Thank you, Ramsey. Tasha uh, Rafna, it's uh, wonderful to be here. Um, I'm from just over the hill from you at, uh, at UC Santa Cruz. Absolutely, and, where uh, you are a, uh, a, a associate professor. Yes. I, uh, can you tell us a little bit about uh, your sure, position? I, I teach in the film and digital media department at Santa Cruz. We have a department that teaches both production and critical studies and history and theory of, of really a whole range of media, everything from cinema traditionally conceived of right through to digital media, to video, to television. We, we really cover everything. Very nice. And you've been there for uh, about yeah, 10 just years? Just over 10 years now. Wow. Yeah. So yeah. Mabruk and welcome to sure, Arabology. Sure, sure. And our very special guest of honor, Mu'min Smihi. I'm pronouncing it half Arabic, half <laughs> French here. Welcome, Alan wa sahlan, and uh, bienvenue to Thank our you. show. Thank you very much. Thank you. Alan and, wa sahlan. So the, it's a very special day because uh, the collaboration between both of you has led to uh, several events that are going on around the Bay Area and which will showcase the films and the oeuvre of uh, Mu'min Smihi. Can you tell us how this began, maybe with Peter, and how were you were able to get this great man to come to California? Well, it really began so much of these things, I think, are about collaborations. And uh, a few years ago, at one of the earlier versions of the Arab Film Festival, which is ongoing in, in several cities here right now, it's still coming up for a, uh, another part of its season in Berkeley uh, very, very soon. And at an earlier version of the Arab Film Festival, I had the good fortune to meet Moomin. We showed his film uh, A Muslim Childhood. I was helping uh, with the selection committee and the programming of that film and we started talking he visited my classes at UC Santa Cruz uh, we had a great time and we started to think about working on other projects in the future so I've been doing a lot of research recently on Arab cinemas in general 
and uh, have become very, very interested in, in women's films. So one of the difficulties in writing about or talking about films from the Arab world, as you well know, I think it's a similar problem with music, is that so many people are interested, but so few people have had a chance to be exposed to those films. So one of the things that was top of my list was really to try to program a season of Moomin's films and get it across different theatres and universities in the States, but also hopefully in other places too. Uh, because I think when people discover these films, they'll, they'll see that there's really some extraordinary things to think about and reflect on, things to just enjoy and take pleasure in, but also things that I think really can prompt reflection and critical thought and dialogue um, uh, across the region and across its history. So for me, it's, uh, it's about programming and, and watching and enjoying and talking about films. The other part of my job, of course, is doing research and writing and I tend to work very historically and get very embedded in these projects. So that's the other part that's ongoing that, that you won't get to see so much, but it really comes into the dialogue around these films that we've, that we've put together with the help of Livia Alexander, uh, working uh, formerly for an arts organization in New York, your cousin, Rasha Sauti, who has been so influential <laughs> in, uh, in bringing films to the United States from the Arab world. I credit her with many of the things that I saw that, that excited me about Arab cinema. So really this is about collaboration, uh, but of course at the moment it's mostly about uh, seeing these wonderful films by Moomin. So Moomin Smihi, welcome to Stanford. Is Thank this you your, your first visit here? Or? To Stanford, yes, but uh, I have been uh, some years ago to uh, the Arab Film Festival in San Francisco. Before I have been lecturing at the uh, UCLA also many years ago. And talking, I want to take you back to the 70s, at an era where maybe the only kind of Arab films with exposure were Egyptian films. We kind of all grew up watching Egyptian cinema. But when we think of Moroccan films or films that center on Morocco and by Moroccan filmmakers, there were very few people that came to mind. And with the advent of your works and your films, and I am reading this from several sources, Forces. You have redefined Moroccan cinema, you've launched it into a new era, and you've done so almost single-handedly. How do you feel when you hear that, looking back at the past decades, knowing how instrumental you have been in uh, giving birth to a new genre of Moroccan cinema, one that has been accepted worldwide? Well, I'm not happy with it. <laughs> <laughs> That's an answer I didn't expect, Peter. <laughs> uh, I never, uh, I'm never happy to hear that I am uh, a man of the past. Of the past, uh, I prefer to be man of the future. <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> but so, but, 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 but these uh, these questions about the seventies are very, very important because they are linked with uh, just what I said. I mean, we had in Arab world, but also in all the world, we had the movie entertainment, and then in the fifties, uh, sixties. Uh, was born the new cinema in France, in Japan, in Italy with uh, the famous neorealistic school. And then in the 60s, in 50s, 60s, there was in the world two main streams of the cinema. There was the Hollywoodian stream and the new stream that was the cultural artistic film. And What's important in the 70s to say, not only in Morocco, but in all Arab world, mm. is that in the 70s, after the independences, a lot of uh, directors like me were back from European and American schools, and we made a new Arab cinema. That was me and others in Morocco, but in Lebanon there was Burhan Alawiya, mm -hmm. in Algeria there was Lakhdar Hamina and uh, Al Wash, uh, uh, 
uh, even from uh, Bahrain, uh, the, the, there was a wonderful oh, film. I say even mm -hmm. because there wasn't an industry right. like in North Africa, in Tunisia, there were a lot of people. And all the cinema can be described as really the new Arab cinema. We must go further and further. That's why I'm speaking about the future. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we must go further and further uh, ahead, making cultural, intellectual, without any shame, intellectual, mm -hmm. <laughs> artistic, Arab films. Absolutely. Il al Amam, as we Il say. Il al Amam. Min ajl cinema tsakafiya. Wa arabiya. Did you encounter much resistance in your early works when you were trying to give birth to this new genre in an era where people were solely attached to the either Hollywoodian model or the Egyptian cinema that can be more mainstream. So in all these countries, uh, our audiences were almost null. Mm. Uh, financing was almost inexisting. I mean, when Burhan Alawi in Lebanon or me in Morocco or uh, uh, Khalid al mm. I remember his name now in Bahrain, was uh, asking uh, Arab governments and Arab financiers to finance films, uh, we just uh, met laughters. Hmm. But our films was so much welcomed <laughs> in Paris, in London, in Rome, because there, uh, there was uh, a tradition and a movie culture. There was critics and uh, audience and uh, theaters. And we discovered all this new Arab generation of films. We discovered that we uh, have an audience, not immediately in our countries, but it is coming to exist in our mm. countries uh, because our work is worth, because we uh, are working in uh, the stream of the history of cinema and uh, we are sincere with our commitments, etc. And in fact, uh, this is what happened. In fact, today, in all the Arab countries, there are new audiences there are film festivals, there are critics, there are uh, books about cinema, etc. So uh, this is another time the link between uh, these beginnings and the future. Uh, Peter, I mean, you have worked tirelessly to get uh, to exactly. Do, to well, one these never does so exactly. one never does these things alone. So I've been lucky to to be able to work with somebody like Livia Alexander on the programming of Moomin's films, mm. and in the symposium that Moomin just mentioned, unfixed itineraries, uh, we're calling it film and visual culture from Arab worlds. Uh, this is taking place at my campus, University of California, Santa Cruz, in uh, in just a week and a day from now, the twenty fifth and the twenty sixth. But in working on this, I've been working all the time, all the way through, with Umnia El Shakri, mm. a wonderful professor at UC Davis, who is just as invested in, in all these questions. And uh, together, we've really crafted a program that I feel very proud of and, and we think is quite extraordinary, um, working also with colleagues at UC Santa Cruz to make this happen. So, of course, these things are always collaborations, and I think they're very much collaborations with the artists and the scholars who we're bringing. Ladies and gentlemen, you've been listening to the uh, first part of my interview with uh, none other than Mu'min Smihi, who is the internationally recognized Moroccan director who is often uh, touted for single-handedly revolutionizing uh, uh, Moroccan films, and uh, he continues to produce, he continues to direct, and uh, I had the pleasure of uh, speaking with him during this interview. 
along with uh, Professor Peter Limbrick from UC Santa Cruz, who is uh, currently uh, involved in uh, an amazing seminar that is taking place on October 25th and 26th called Unfixed Itineraries, Film and Visual Culture from Arab Worlds. We'll be listening to uh, part two of that interview uh, later on on uh, today's show. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Arabology coming to you from KZSU Stanford, 90.1 FM. And uh, we're almost halfway through the show. Plenty more goodies to come. How would you like the chance to win a couple of tickets to, uh, well, a concert that's going to be taking place in uh, at the College of uh, San Mateo, and uh, that will be on uh, December 7th at 7.30 p.m. Uh, this is a concert by Aswat, the Bay Area Arab Music Ensemble, who are uh, very well known here in the, in the area. Uh, this is a tribute concert they're doing to an amazing uh, Egyptian singer whose name uh, was Abdel Halim Hafiz. So this this concert is envisioned a little bit like a sing-along of some of Abdel Halim Hafiz's greatest hits. And uh, it's a very special uh, concert indeed. Again, it is on December 7th at uh, 7.30 p.m. And that's at the College of San Mateo Theater. So um, in uh, the spirit of uh, resurrecting uh, Abdel Halim Hafiz and his music, I'm about to play one of his uh, most beloved hits. It's called "Awwal Marra Tabbi Ya Albi," and it means for the uh, the first time you you have ever loved, oh my heart. And uh, we'll hear a live recording of that. Uh, during which uh, I would um, like to give away two tickets to the concert. Uh, you, all you need to do is, as soon as the next track begins, call six five zero seven two three nine zero one zero. Let's listen to Abdel Halim Hafiz himself in a live recording singing Awwal Marra Tahibbi Ya Albi during which I will take uh, the phone calls for the winners the number 650-723-9010 Here's Abdul Halim Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, that was the one and only Tanya Saleh from Lebanon and a live recording, a really rare one, for a song called Arifti Ayya Stil. I don't know if you uh, were able to uh, listen to the lyrics. I mean, I know they were in Arabic, but there were some words in there that were in English. In fact, she was singing about Kurt Cobain and, lo and behold, uh, the Silicon Valley. So how appropriate is it for us to actually uh, play... Uh, a song about the Silicon Valley in Arabic when we are so in the Silicon Valley. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the things that uh, went on in the past couple of weeks here at Stanford uh, was uh, the launching and the opening of the Stanford Merkaz Resource Center. The Merkaz uh, Resource Center is, uh, is uh, well, the, uh, the goal of that uh, resource center is uh, to engage uh, with the cultures and people's of the Muslim world. This is a division of student affairs at Stanford University. And uh, the uh, Marcas Resource Center had their grand uh, opening on October 7th. Uh, I was uh, delighted to attend and uh, speak to some of the attendees about what does Al Marcas mean to them and to the Stanford community at uh, large. And also to to uh, find out about uh, what exactly is the mission of Al Marcas here at Stanford. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll uh, go back to <laughs> that time and try to see uh, through interviews what uh, people thought about um, Al Marcas, ladies and gentlemen. Let's begin with uh, attendee uh, Nadia Smati. I'm sitting here at the Al Marcas opening with Nadia Smati, who is a student here here at Stanford, and for full disclosure, we have to say you were one of my students, Nadia. Marhaba, how have you been? I've been wonderful, thank you. Can you tell us a little bit about what is Al Marcas and why you feel it's an important presence on campus? So Al Marcas is essentially um, a center. It's supposed to be a community center, similar to the other community centers we have on campus. The reason why it's very important to me personally is that it feels like now there's a niche or a place in Stanford that's home for people who identify with the Middle Eastern identity or Muslim identity or at all interested in Middle Eastern culture in any way, which is very important because um, all students want to feel included in the place that where they study, and Omrika provides that for us. And uh, is it uh, inclusive, meaning is anybody welcome to come in and uh, enjoy El Marcas? Absolutely, and that's what we're really hoping is going to be the final result, is that students from all sorts of backgrounds, all sorts of identities will come and to sort of learn about what the Middle East is, what the Muslim world is, what the Arab world is, or anything related to that. So it's meant to be very inclusive and kind of share who we are so we're not sort of this sort of third figure around campus. Uh, 
Assalamu alaikum subhan ali. I'm sitting here with you at Al Merkaz at Stanford. Glad to be here. Thanks for joining me. So, this is a huge uh, thing here at Stanford. Can you explain to our listeners what is Al Merkaz? Mm -hmm. Well, the Merkaz, the, the word itself means uh, center um, in a variety of different languages, including Arabic, Hebrew, Urdu. Um, and the intent really was uh, Stanford University has made a lot of progress when, I talk, when you're talking about the Muslim world on the academic front. So in terms of uh, courses offered, in terms of academic programming, in terms of faculty, there's been progress there. And so what we're really trying to do with the Marcus is to provide a whole other avenue for people to engage with the Muslim world, the cultures and peoples of the Muslim world. And um, this is really in the realm of student affairs so that you know half the learning at Stanford happens inside the classroom. Mm -hmm. And this is really a formalized way within the Division of Student Affairs for that to begin to happen on hopefully um, a scale that we, we, we've been trying to have for a while now and that I think the campus community is eager to embrace at this time, point in time. And what is the relation between MSA and, and Al Marcus? Um, well, so the Marcus is meant to, to serve um, really anyone who identifies with the Muslim world um, in any way, shape, or form, whether that's culturally, um, socially, uh, even religiously. Sitting here with Usama El Gabalawi. Notice I didn't say Jabalawi, but Gabalawi because he's originally from Egypt, right, Usama? Absolutely. Assalamu alaikum. Usama, can you tell our listeners where we are? We are right now in the Marrakesh Workshop Room, Resource Center for Cultural Engagement with the Peoples and Cultures of the Muslim World. Wow, and this is opening night officially. Abs yeah, it's very excited. It's opening night, and we have so many people here, and we're very excited. Usama, you've been involved in creating Al Marcas for a while. Yeah. Uh, can you tell our listeners what it is? So the Marcas is this resource center um, that promotes and, and promotes students to engage with the cultures and peoples of the Muslim world. And what that means is that there's an academic uh, presence on campus for people to learn about the Muslim world. But we really want to bring in the student activities uh, point of view in, of like engaging with the Muslim world. So people can come here, listen to you know speakers talk about the Muslim world, hear about cultural and student organizations on campus, and how they can get involved with the Muslim world, uh, or how to get involved on campus and really engage their interests. Well, very special thanks to uh, Nadia Smati, Subhan Ali, and Usama Gabalawi for uh, speaking with us about the opening of the Merkaz, which is a resource center for engagement with the cultures and peoples of the Muslim world. It is a division of student affairs here at Stanford University, and it is located uh, in the old union complex. So uh, check it out if you are interested. In the meantime, it is 5.22 p.m. right here at KZSU Stanford, 90.1 FM. You are listening to the Arabology Show. I'm your DJ Ramsey, and uh, in the last half hour of the show, we'll be listening to part two of my interview with the Moroccan director, filmmaker, and uh, writer and poet, uh, that is uh, Mu'min Smihi, along with uh, Professor Peter Limerick. And we'll be, uh, we heard the first part of the interview during the first part of the show. Well, we will conclude the show with the second part of that interview. But uh, before we do that, why don't we go to Watch a Clan? and a song called The Osfur.
Yep, that was what? A clan. The song called Osfur. Osfur in Arabic means bird. They're not the original singers of the song, but hey, I like their mix. Ladies and gentlemen, in the uh, half hour that remains uh, here on the Arabology Show, I'd like to play the second and final part of my interview with uh, director uh, Mu'min Nesmihi, who is currently in the Bay Area and whose films are being shown at the Arab Film Festival, among other places. As uh, the interview also, of course, includes uh, the one and only and amazing uh, Professor. Sir uh, Peter Limbrick from UC Santa Cruz, who is responsible for so much in terms of uh, resurrecting uh, some of Mu'min Smihi's films and other Arab cultural productions. He is an amazing professor who I had the uh, pleasure to speak with, uh, along with Mu'min Smihi. So let's listen to part two of that interview and uh, reminding everybody before we do so to stick around at uh, 6 p.m. after my show for uh, Eliza Ridge and the Peninsula Report that will be coming your way at uh, 6 p.m. Uh, tonight. Mo'min, honestly, I do feel humbled and um, I did quite a bit of research before speaking with you today. Just in terms of contextualizing your films in time, I am very impressed and somewhat surprised by how forward-looking you are and an almost perhaps... Uh, uh, reluctance to go back to the past and put us in the moment of production. That sort of takes a second seat to how the film is being contextualized now, brought up to date, how we can refer to it now. And maybe in this interview, I'm try. I was trying too hard to bring you back in time <laughs> to these films and expect a commentary mm. about each. But that was really just my attempt to tell people of your of. What about the Tales of the Night? Now, this one, Peter, you actually mm. brought up to date mm. as well. Mm. And this will well, be we're showing screening. this next, next Thursday, the 24th of October at the Pacific Film Archive. They have a lovely tradition called After Image, which usually puts a scholar and a filmmaker together for a conversation. So Moomin and I will be speaking about the film after the film screens. And all of that information, again, is on the website. All we on the website. That, uh, Everything's uh, free. We, we really welcome everybody to come along. Unfixed.ucsc.edu. Uh, moments me, I, I, I could speak with you for hours and take you through the journey <laughs> that you well, you well deserve. But in uh, the interest of time, what is your... Um, commentary on the tales of the night which uh, has now been reborn both digitally and chronologically i think has taken on a whole new meaning what is the movie about the complete title of the movie is 44 or the tales of the night and the 44 are for the 44 years that the french spanish uh, protectorate of Morocco lasted. Oh, wow. So the film is beginning in 1912 when uh, the first uh, uh, settlers and uh, French and S French army arrived to Casablanca and uh, finished in uh, 56 with the declaration of independence. And uh, you know, we in the Arab world, and this is also the theme of the symposium, we work on different and several titles for our films. Mm. And it's not only a matter of uh, translation, and even we have to get through the right meaning. So. In Arabic, the title is Usturatul Layl. Arba'arba'il au Usturatul Layl. In the word. Legend of the Night. Uh, well, the word Ustura is very, very, very important 
because uh, this word I think uh, we find it in the Quran and perhaps it's not an Arabic word perhaps mm. it's a Greek word mm. because uh, historia in Greek history mythima the signification of the Greek history mythima is in the same time history the first history in the world and legend and legend mm -hmm. together mm -hmm. together and the famous Greek legends etc and this is very important because uh, this is a word sacred many times mm -hmm. not only in the Quran but also in ideology but also in political meanings etc and in France uh, in French the translation is les récits de la, de la nuit interesting and the, the, the word récit is uh, is uh, an important word because it is completely modern with the structurali structuralist researchers in France in the 70s, 80s and this is word in English now very fundamental in all the new research and I think it is narrative. Mm -hmm. So the film could be uh, uh, very strangely titled uh, the narrative of the night but as well Resi as a narrative is important because in the structuralist narrative it is referring to this fundamental discourse of our modernity, which is the psychoanalytic discourse. Mm. And so, taking us from Osturat al Layl, we're now we're translating Ostura as I <laughs> see in French, <laughs> and Tales in English, very, very interesting and enlightening. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah. uh, I, I totally can understand um, the necessity for not translating things sort of. Literally, literally, in terms of it's not here, working. The ostura as legende would not work. No. We're talking about Rissi here would have that connotation. But moving from that to uh, the big mirror in 1987, the lady from Cairo, 1991, defending Egyptian cinema in 1990, and with Matisse in Tangiers in 1993 leading us to the Moroccan Chronicles in 1999. Now, I'd like to pause at the Moroccan Chronicles because thi this mm -hmm. is what will be presented tonight. tonight. Mm -hmm. Thanks, of course, to uh, Professor Peter Limerick. Now, Peter, mm -hmm. what is the title of the 2008 film? So, in English, we've translated it as Girls and Swallows, or Moomin's translated it as Girls and Swallows. What is the, the title? Bel Arabiya. Azara wa Sununu. Nice, <laughs> <laughs> but the Hazara girls uh, works. I would so. uh, would virgins work yes. better? <laughs> well, we 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 tried virgins. We tried uh, girls. We and uh, at last we found that uh, the swallows. It's uh, quicker, and it's. Uh, more Hitchcockian. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, no, yeah, no reference to the birds of uh, Hitchcock. Um, but that brings me back to um, your latest film. I think uh, it is uh, Tanjawi, Sorrows of a Young Tangerian. Now, this is your latest production. Yes. Uh, and I personally have not seen it. I am really looking forward to seeing it. But what can you tell us about it, Moment, being... Uh, your present of your current uh, work of art and close to what we're going to call the future being launched into the immediate future one of the main concept in uh, the new research is the concept of intertextuality and uh, in films as well as in literature uh, a writer, a director is always working in not in comparison but in questioning and answers with other texts, with other earth, with other works. So it, the 
70s since we talked about these different decades. The 70s were, uh, I'll say, uh, the, the decade of neo Italian neorealism and also Russian cinema, the constructivist editing cinema, etc. In the 80s, that was much more uh, a cinema related to what uh, the French critic was uh, calling le film d'auteur, mm -hmm. author's film. But the author's film for the film, uh, for the French critics, the author's films were people like Hitchcock, mm -hmm. like uh, mm -hmm. Nicolas Ray, like uh, uh, Woody Allen, that means people from Hollywood, but making intellectual films and that's important to mention to the uh, Arabic to the Arab audience to the Arabic audience uh, you you said that uh, I seem intellectual in my discourse etc but this is not at all rare in uh, in international movie when you hear when we heard talking people like Hitchcock, like uh, Raoul Walsh, like uh, Roberto Rossellini, like Jean Renoir. They were people of very great culture, very great education, and they were very much related to the cultural history. I mean, Raoul Walsh was citing always Shakespeare and... Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, uh, Woody Allen is always talking about uh, uh, Flaubert and uh, mm -hmm. sentimental education, etc. The movie directors and the history of movie, this is important to mention to our, uh, <laughs> our uh, Arab audiences. Uh, audience. The, the movie is very cultural. So these last films, in uh, reference to this uh, concept of intertextuality, these last films are linked very much to the culture, the art, the feelings of the last decade. Mm -hmm. I mean, I saw films by uh, people like, uh, uh, in Portuguese, Manuel de Oliveira, and uh, in uh, Taiwan, Hu Xiao Xian. I watched films of these directors after I made mm -hmm. my films, the trilogy of 10 years, mm -hmm. Muslim Childhood, The Swallows and Tanjawi. And I made these films according to uh, a way of uh, watching and producing movie in the 2000s, not according to the other schools I mentioned by, but according to a personal research. You know, the mm -hmm. actor is, as a writer, mm -hmm. is getting old, that means he's getting, <laughs> getting <wiser. laughs> experience <laughs> and wise and saying, now I am going to do it my way, etc. Mm -hmm. But the intertextuality is very important because without having seen these films mm -hmm. of uh, Oliveira and Xiao Xian, just uh, to name two of them, I discovered that I was in the same uh, mm. feeling mm. of research. Mm. I mean, I'm not comparing myself to my Oliveira, who is so big international. <laughs> I like him so much. But I mean, uh, you work uh, according to this concept of intertextuality and you find that it works, mm. that it mm. exists, mm. that mm. effectively, uh, work art is having its own life. Mm -hmm. So you see the current state of chaos in the Arab world or in, let's say, specifically Egypt or Tunisia or everywhere, uh, or even fact. Syria now. No, everywhere, um, in fact. Everywhere. Let's be frank and without censorship. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But you see that as being uh, empowering for filmmakers, for a new generation that is growing up in this new 
you know, state of being. Really, I am optimistic. I am not surprised by uh, what's happening, uh, especially because I am Moroccan and what's happening since only two years in uh, the one political party countries. We lived it in Morocco since some um, 20 years. Wow. I mean, the censorship, the crackdowns, the chaos, mm. etc. And uh, I think that uh, the, the intellectual Arab movement since exactly people like Taha Hussein till the effort of these film directors but also artists but also writers uh, so important novelists like Najim Mahfoud uh, it's so new this form of novel in Arab language mm. it's so new so revolutionary mm, mm, mm. <laughs> I mean that what's happening on the street it's also the result of many decades of intellectuals talking, editing publishing, making films researching and saying be aware the concepts of liberty, of freedom of uh, uh, a better uh, distribution of health, be aware of the people, don't let misery, don't mm. believe in crackdowns mm. as, uh, as uh, the result, etc. I mean, the, the, there are historical uh, cross uh, intersections, intersections mm. and uh, of course the chaos is very frightening, mm. of course there is matter of life and death, of course people are dying, mm. and etc, uh, etc. Et and with Mu'min Smihi, and the Mu'min with Alik, yeah, Mu'min, he <laughs> <laughs> uh, believes through this, yes, and his name is the proof. Yes. I, think <laughs> there, I think there will be a better mm. uh, future for I us all. I believe in cultural <laughs> hope. Mu'min Smihi, I, I don't know how to thank you for, for taking you. part in, uh, in this interview and for gracing the Arabology show and KZSU 94.1 FM. Uh, this will be in our archives for many years to come and who knows in a few decades we will revisit <laughs> it inshallah. <laughs> uh, Peter you. Limerick, uh, you are beyond description uh, with the effort you have put into creating the unfixed itineraries film and visual mm -hmm. culture from the Arab worlds with an S is something that I think is beyond human capability <laughs> yet you managed to do it. Well either. I hope we're going to be representing something like this spirit that we've been talking about I think when you look at our program we've got on the level of the artists and, and producers and creators coming um, we have people from movements generation Nabil Maleh from Syria fantastic filmmaker with an incredible record deserving of his own show here maybe when he comes uh, you'll be able to track him down as well but we also have as Moomin is talking about this much younger generation of artists and um, so again just pulling out some of these names Ali Cherry who's made the most incredible video um, partly reflecting on the situation of, of chaos in Syria right now but part of a generation of artists along with people like Larissa Sansur uh, and, and of scholars and critics as well who I think are really representing a, a really uh, a wide range of perspectives and so we'll be talking from everything uh, like uh, activist art and, and street art in Gaza through to histories of cinematic production from from years past. Um, the, again the website Peter is mm -hmm. unfixed dot ucsc.edu ucsc for uc santa cruz unfix.ucsc.edu maybe we can have a link from arabology somewhere absolutely and that's what i was going to say is i will find be placing on my blog uh, which is meant to go along with the show we'll have mm -hmm. a, a link to all this peter limerick associate professor in the film and digital media at uc santa cruz uh, has been one of my two amazing guests today on the arabology show mm -hmm. shukran peter Shukran. Merci, <laughs> and please don't be a stranger to the Arabology show. We're always here to help you uh, showcase and bring.
bring attention to these important works that you are bringing back to life. Mm -hmm. Peter Sukran, moments me, I will always remember this day as one of the most important days of my life when I was able to sit here and speak with you so candidly and intimately. Sukran Jazila well, for your man. presence. Takalamna bilugha l'inglesia kathiran wa lam nasma al kuna l'lugha l'arabia. Jamila kadali, jamila kadali. Tab bilnisba li mustami'ina fi al-sharq al-awsat wa fi al-alam al-arabi hal yumkinuka an taqul lahum jayu zumla sagheera likay yastami'u ila l-lugha l-arabia al-jamila abra al-bath al-hay wa al-mubashir? الفكرة اللي تراودني أكثر حاليا وهي أن لغتي وطني فقط لغتي وطني ولا وفكرة العالم العربي لا تحيا لا تحيا لغتي وطني ولكن ممكن أضيف لغاتي وطني <تصفيق> أنا أحب الفرنسية أحب الإنجليزية أحب ريت لو أتكلم روسية <تصفيق> لغتي وطني I've been loosely translated and it's going to take a lot more than two words in English My language is my homeland My language is my country but also my language is Conform that, and I think it's a beautiful point to, to end with, <laughs> in terms of this, uh, you know, the, this idea of having a, a, a united sort of Arab world, uh, a new beginning for a new generation that does not see Egyptian as opposed to Lebanese. They don't see Christian as opposed to Muslim and and Jew, and and for it to, to be a new a new beginning with this Arab Spring and with this chaotic state that will inshallah lead to a better tomorrow. Shukran to Shukran. both of you. I am honored. Shukran. Shukran. We will stay in touch.